So today we're going to start section 11.1. Uh, it's titled Basic Notions. And I'll um, apologize in advance for you. This is going to be one of the driest sections that we're going to have um, because it's going to form sort of the basis of vocabulary. Make sure that when you say a word and I say a word, we have the same idea in mind about what we're talking about, that kind of stuff. So a lot of this is going to be just vocab stuff. All right. So just bear with me. I promise it'll get more interesting than 11.1. Okay. All right, so to start with, um, some definitions. Um, well, a point indicates a location or a place, not a size. And we use an uppercase letter to designate a point. A line indicates length, but not width. If you've got two points A and B, there's precisely one line going through these two points. Um, the notation, I think this is probably where I would put it, the notation for that would be the two letters A, B in either order with a line with, or I, look, a line piece, right, with the arrows on the end. That's not very good looking, but you have the idea. So that's how we would designate a line. Another option, as mentioned in the second bullet point, is that you could name a line by a lowercase letter, like this scripty K. And they do usually look script when you see them in your book. Um, they like to use L for line, I think, um, uh, frequently. But you also see J's and K's. Those tend to be the three that they use the most. So either the two points in the line, like I mentioned, or a lowercase letter. A line segment is a piece of the line that contains the endpoints and all the points between. So while a line goes on in both directions forever, a line segment is finite, it's limited, it's measurable. And the way that we write it to show the difference is that we put the line without the arrows above it. So this would be the line segment AB starts and ends, whereas the line AB goes on forever in both directions and has the arrows on the ends for the notation. We also have um, an item that sometimes is called a half line. It depends on the resources that you use, but it's more commonly called a ray. It's a subset of a line that has one end point, but then it extends in only one direction forever. So if it's beyond B, the way that this is described, then you see that same line segment on top of AB, but you see an arrow drawn showing that it has an end point at A, but it continues on past B. Every two points will lie on a line, okay? But if you have three points that all lie on the same line, those points are called collinear. So not all three, you know, sets of three points would be collinear, um, but some would. And when we have, in fact, let me draw one just so that I can reference it with what we're talking about visually below. So let's say that we have this. So here is point A, I should have drawn an arrow at the end, pardon me for a second and I'll do that. And then we have point B right over here with the arrow at the end and C is somewhere in between them for the sake, oh, actually that's not how I wrote my thing below, switch B and C, my bad, sorry. I have it written like that. So A, B, and C all lie on the same line, so they match the description of collinear. Um, B is actually between A and C, the way it's described underneath my bullet point, um, the second bullet point here. And we can actually talk about um, the lengths adding up. For example, this piece right here, AB, like that length, right, from here to here, and this length from here to here are distances. So A, B is the distance from A to B, and you'll notice notationally there's simply nothing on top of it. There's not a line segment, there's not a line, there's not a ray. 
there's nothing on top of it. So if there's nothing on top of those two letters side by side, what it means is it means the length. How long is it? If you were to measure it with a ruler, what would you get kind of thing, okay? So that's distance or length. We can do the same thing with BC and we can do the same thing with AC. And what you notice from this equation is exactly what you would assume to be true. The distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C is the distance from A to C. But that only happens when things are collinear. If things are not collinear, that doesn't work that way. And there's not an equality there. All right, let's go, let's just go to the end of this page and then we'll stop. So let me do one more si uh, set of slide, one more slide. Um, intersecting lines are lines with exactly one point in common. So I've got some pictures here at the bottom of your page. I don't know if they're on your page or not. Did they print? No. Sometimes it's hard to get word to actually do images that I want. So just go ahead and take a minute to draw those two images onto your bottom of your page. And what you'll notice is that you have some intersecting lines. We'll just look at that very first picture. For example, whoops, let me get that white back. Line AB intersects line BC. And in particular, they intersect at point B, right? and they will only intersect one time. And that's a fact about lines in Euclidean geometry, which is where we're living. We're living in Euclidean geometry for this semester of this course. And we could do the same thing over here with the other picture. Like there's nothing special about one picture here versus the other. So these, this one right here, for example, if I talk about line DE and I talk about line EF, they intersect, right? And they intersect at the point E. Now lines don't have to intersect, right? If I did line DE and visually what it looks like is I did line FG, they're not intersecting. We'll talk more about them later. So it's not that this always is true about lines, but if it is true, they only intersect at one place. The other definition you see on this screen um, is concurrent lines. Concurrent lines are kind of like collinear, right? Concurrent, though, means that three or more of them, like the collinear three or more, intersect at the same point. So again, not all three lines do that. The first image, they're not collinear. Those three lines do not intersect at the same spot, right? There's three different intersections for the three different lines. But the second set of lines have that happening. Line ED and line EF, like I mentioned before, along with line EG, all intersect at E. So some concurrent lines here would be line EF, line ED, uh, and line EG. Those would be, not collinear, I probably said it wrong, concurrent, concurrent is what I meant to say. Those would be concurrent lines. They all intersect at the same point. It's a feature that not all lines will have, but some will. All right, we will pick up next time on planes. Have a great week, or a great couple days anyway. I'll see y'all on Wednesday.